Okay, everybody, we are now at six o'clock, so we're going to kick this off. Welcome to the Pioneer Community Energy Community Meeting. Um, we are we talking about what Pioneer is, how it works, um, some quick housekeeping. Uh, we have a presentation set up. It's really thorough, covers a lot of information and usually most of the questions. We do have time planned for the end for as many uh, questions as you guys have. We want to make sure everyone gets a chance to ask and have them answered. There are two options. There is a Q&A feature um, on your screen. You can type in your questions there, or you can type them into the chat. Um, I'm Alexia Ritalik, and I have uh, Steve Lund working with me. we both here at Pioneer, and we will be um, co-teaming this. Uh, Steve will be tracking your questions, and when we get to the end of the presentation, we'll cover them all. So with that, let's get started. So what is Pioneer Community Energy? Uh, Pioneer Community Energy is a locally owned electricity provider. It's basically, it's a partnership of Placer County, El Dorado County, and the cities therein to provide power to the community and all of the constituents. We've tried for competitive rates, reliable service, and a choice in energy options. We also try for programs that work for our local communities. So the vision of Pioneer is to kind of become reliable, positive impact, um, looking to power us up today and empowering our tomorrows. And that means making choices that work for our communities and to kind of create our own energy independence. So, um, when, in addition to being community owned and having the competitive rates, we're not for profit. Pioneer Community Energy is a joint powers authority. That's a government structure. So it's a government agency and we are not for profit. We don't pay uh, for uh, federal income taxes. We don't have investors. We don't have dividends we need to pay out. Everything that we do is for and on behalf of rate payers. Uh, at this point in time, as we complete the enrollment in El Dorado County, it's not fully completed because still our customers, we'll talk about you guys in a little bit, a little different, um, but the majority will be enrolled. And at this point, the combination of Placer El Dorado County is about 160,000 customers. So, this is the service area. Um, just so everyone can see, we get a lot of questions from soap saying, well, what, ex you know, I'm outside of Placerville, am I included? Or I'm in El Dorado Hills, am I included? And yes, this, the blue area is Pioneer Service Area. So you can kind of see where it is. We can function and serve in pg e territory at this point in time. You can see to the right of the screen that we've got Liberty Utilities. Uh, Liberty is an investor in utility. We are not in that area. So South Tahoe and all of those are, are not going to be served, nor is North Tahoe. Um, at the same time, if you look at the Placer County area, you'll see a, a pink area for Roseville Electric and, and a little bit of smud into that yellow part. We don't serve those areas either because we're not allowed to operate in a publicly owned utility district. So the blue is it, and you can see all the towns and cities. Okay, so a lot of things stayed the same with Pioneer Community Energy coming in. There's only one thing that really changes, and that is that Pioneer provides the power. So prior to January, pg &E was purchasing the power. They were maintaining the transmission lines and the distribution system. So that's the substations and the small poles that um, reach our homes. pg e was providing customer service and they were handling all the bills, reading the meters, um, putting the bills together, mailing them out, handling payments. After January 1 in El Dorado County, Pioneer began to be the one who purchases the electricity and puts it on the grid. pg e still maintains the lines of poles, very important. So if there is a power outage or if there's a downed pole or if you need help with a meter, those are assets that still belong to pg e That is that side of the business. That is where they make their money. That is um, the core portion of their work. Um, we buy power in, uh, in the market like pg e does, and we are the ones who provide that. You have now not only pg e customer service, you also have Pioneer customer service. We can answer questions about bills. We can do bill analysis. We can talk rates, rate options, rate plans. We're happy to answer a lot of your questions. And if there's something that's going on that isn't part of us, but, that, but belongs to pg e we often move that right over to pg and work with them in tandem to make sure we get our customers taken care of. In addition, a lot of folks say, well, are you going to get a second bill? That's the way this works is pg is our billing agent by law. So 
Pioneer and PG&E are on the same bill. You get one bill. If you don't have solar, you'll see PG&E's electric distribution charges. Um, they're called delivery charges on page three. And on page four would be Pioneer's generation charges. One bill, one payment. You don't have to worry about anything from there. Just make that one payment and PG&E gets, um, make sure that uh, the portion that belongs to Pioneer is passed through. Makes it really easy. So some of the folks have been asking, you know, we haven't heard anything about Pioneer. When did this start? How did this happen? We've actually been working on this since 2020 when El Dorado County in Placerville approached us and said, hey, we want to do this. Can you can you make this happen? And so um, we've had a number of community meetings, and that means meetings and presentations to chambers, to rotary clubs, community meetings, uh, small groups, book groups, um, Seroptimist Club, the uh, Democratic Women's Club of Placerville, things along those lines. We've been to a lot of different community meetings and we continue to go to them and will as long as folks ask for them, we will be there. We've handled um, over 3000 customer calls and emails. We've had uh, more than 48 media posts and we have about 570 followers. When we say 48 media posts, that's just the posting itself. The way that's been shared has been exponential. And so there've been um, tens of thousands of additional views. Um, we've had 28 earned media stories. Um, that means that those are stories that from the newspapers and, and things that were inserted, to, inserted into the newspapers and such. And so that, that equates out to, based on the distribution of all the media, about 2.9 million uh, viewers. Um, we developed an insert. Those of you who get the Mountain Democrat, um, the, I believe it's the Village, get the Georgetown Gazette and some of those others. Uh, we did an eight page insert that was placed into the newspaper and distributed to all of the folks who get those papers so that you would have something to look at and read about, about Pioneer. So we've done a lot of outreach and we continue to do it and are happy to answer as many questions as you have. So uh, PG&E rate, um, uh, rate changes. We wanted to talk about this because there are a lot of things that have happened in 2022. So first in January, and I want everybody to be ready for this because um, all of us, it doesn't matter who you are, who your provider is, whether you have direct access, you have Pioneer, you have um, Ohm Connect, you have somebody else. It doesn't matter who you're working with on your bill. PG&E's transmission and distribution, those rates for lines and poles increased by 12.6% effective January 2022. So just know that you're going to see an increase on your bill, and that's where it's uh, centered at. Second, PG&E has, um, at this point in time, is still scheduled to do a generation rate increase effective March 2022. So like we said, there are two sides of the business. There's the lines and poles, the meters, the meter reading, and all of that. That's one side of the business. And then the other side of the business is the actual generation, which is the electricity itself. And the generation portion is what will increase um, effective March 2022. In addition, PG&E will be modifying the power charge and difference adjustment. This is a charge that's on the bill when PG&E purchases power under long-term contracts. Those contracts go out 5, 10, 15, 20 years at time, and they lock in a rate. Well, the PCIA is meant to be a fair share pay for legacy costs. So let's say you're a PG&E customer in 2010, and PG&E buys a long-term contract that goes out to 2030. So it's a 20-year contract. Well, in 2021, El Dorado County is leaving pg e territory. But pg e has this contract that was from 2010 to 2030. What happens to those last nine years? If pg e bought power at $30 a megawatt, and for those last nine years, the folks of El Dorado County aren't there to pay their share, well, pg e can sell it back in the market. But if they can't sell it for the price they bought it at, that $30 a megawatt, what happens? So let's say in 2021, they're able to sell, or 2022, they sell that power into the market in, at $20 a megawatt instead of the 30 they originally purchased it for. Well, there's a $10 loss. pg e under the rules by the Public Utilities Commission is guaranteed a rate of return. So the PCIA is a 
technique, methodology, uh, formula, if you'd like, that goes through and takes that information. And based on when you left Pioneer PG e service, you pay for your portion of the power from the remaining contract after that power sold in the market. That's what it's supposed to be. There've been a lot of other things that it is. Every year we work with it um, and uh, at the Public Utilities Commission trying to keep it under control. But you'll hear the exit fee, PCIA, power charge and difference adjustment. That's what that is. Um, so come March, 2022, pg is changing what that's going to look like. And so we're waiting to see what those will do. Um, Pioneers board in December looked at it and said, okay, pg is changing the rates and they're changing the PCIA. And here's our commitment to the people of El Dorado and Placer County that no matter what pg e does, no matter what the PCIA is, no matter what the, the rates are, we're going to have our folks, when you take Pioneer's rate and you add pg es exit fee or the PCIA to it, it's still gonna be a 6% discount to whatever pg es rates are. So that's the adjustment and commitment. So yes, there is savings now in January and February at the current rates and structure, and the Pioneer Board has made the commitment to have that savings continue in March, 2022, once rates change with pg &E. So what does that mean and what does that look like? So we're kind of taking a look. You've got the pg e versus Pioneer January and February. This is what it looks like in El Dorado County and um, for Placerville as well. So this is a flat rate E1. For those of you who have um, time of use rates, it works very similar, but the, the flat rate's the easiest one to demonstrate it on. So you can see Pioneer standard. It's 0 0.07719. That's the generation rate. Pioneer Green 100, it's, that's the base rate. PG&E bundled customers. So if you have both electricity and transmission distribution from PG&E, you're called a bundled customer. They bundle everything together. That's PG&E's generation rate when you go through and you pull it out of the tariff. All of this information is available online. If anyone wants to research it for themselves, please let us know. We'll direct you right where you can pull it all up. But this is the cost, the difference between Pioneer and PG&E at this time. So we, for those who've been asking about the Green 100, we pointed out in this uh, slide here what it means. The Green 100 is an adder. So what it means is whatever rate you choose, whether it's an E1, a flat rate, a time of use rate, um, an electric vehicle rate, if you're a business, if you have a B1, an A10, it doesn't matter what rate you have. You add about a cent, you know, 1.1 cents to your rate. And that's the adder for having green 100, which is a 100% renewable product. That's how we set that one up. So it makes it very easy for anyone to figure out whether or not they want to have that. So in the next part of this, you have generation rate. You have the green rate 100. You see that adder there, which doesn't apply to Pioneer PG &E, uh, Pioneer Standard or PG&E Bundle. Then you have the delivery rate, which is what PG&E charges for lines and poles right now. They have PG&E surcharges, that two point that um, 0 0.02887 or 2.9 cents right there, that's the current PCIA. Then when you go through and you take that and you drop down to the next one, um, you, it gives you the total when you add all those things up. So you can see that Pioneer standard rates, 0.27815 and the green rate goes to 0.289. So that's 27.8 cents for the standard. 28.9 for the um, 28.9 for the green and then 28.6 for pg e So there is um, a little bit of a savings. You can see an average monthly bill would be 278 if you're on the standard, 289 if you wanted green 100, or if you stay with pg e bundled, it's 286. So that's where the savings comes in. And that's the discount and savings that P Pioneer has dedicated itself to, um, the board is committed to providing is a savings like that. This is a typical E1 rate. Um, there are folks who will save more 
especially if they have a medical baseline. If you are someone with medical baseline, I'll just put this out here right now because it's one of those things. Um, medical baseline is a fantastic program for folks who have and rely on medical devices. It comes with an additional bonus. Instead of paying that point, that uh, 0 0.02887, that PG surcharge of 2.8 cents, you actually only pay one quarter of that um, for 2022. So the savings increases. Um, so anyone knows, uh, for those of you who like to research things, we said you, we can point you out where these things are at. You can see the El Dorado Placerville falls under the 2021 vintage. Um, just as a heads up, a lot of folks have been going out going, oh, we looked at Placer County's rates. Oh my goodness, what's going on there? Placer County's under the 2017. It's a very big difference. They've got a few years on uh, El Dorado County. And so the amount of your PCIA Again, depends on what year you left PG&E service, or we like to say the year you had the freedom to choose who you wanted to have provide you with electricity. So um, this is what the projections are for March, just to kind of give everybody a, a heads up. We are still waiting on this to come through. Our understanding is that February 10th, we're supposed to know for certain what this is, but um, in El Dorado County, um, you can see the commitment, uh, the uh, Pioneers Board made. You know, numbers are still up there. It's still still the same thing with generation, PGE delivery charges. There's the PCIA. PGE's projected to raise it a little bit for El Dorado County. But even so, combining that with Pioneers rates, the board still said at minimum 6%. So um, it's about $10 a month on a standard E1 rate. So you can see that monthly bill. If you're on Pioneer Standard, it's 317. If you're on Pioneer Bundled, it's 327. Um, just for folks to know, when we do enrollment, we don't enroll folks on the green rate. That's a totally voluntary rate. It starts at the standard. It starts at the lowest cost. And so if you, you wanted to do the green 100, you'll have to call us and say, hey, I wanna do this because that's voluntary. But other than that, the um, standard is what we set. So you can see an average bill here might have uh, about $10 savings a month. Um, we're expecting, like I said, more information come February 10th. Uh, so hopefully we'll go from there. Now our, our solar customers, I know a lot of folks have solar out there. It's fantastic you guys operate a little differently because solar customers, and for those of you who don't have solar, we're gonna kind of go through this um, a little, uh, simplified a little bit. Solar customers have a thing called a true up and it starts, their true up month starts the month their system becomes operational. It's when they get permission to operate. So that means the system's already, pg e says, go for it, start generating power. And they do. So some folks are January, some folks are April, some folks are September. I mean, every month there are folks who have a true up. Well, that true up and the way solar works with credits is really important. And so when it came time to enrolling solar customers, Pioneer was very careful and did a phased in approach to make sure that we honor and protect that that uh, annual true up for the solar customers. So for those who are non-solar, the top line where it says first, second notice, enrollment begins, third and fourth notice, that's your timeline. If you don't have solar, you would have you know, seen a first notice in December, and excuse me, first notice in November, a second one in December. We started the enrollment in January. You get another notice, in February and another in March. This is called our enrollment window. And this means you can opt in and out at any time with no problems, no worries. For solar customers, if you had a January, February true up, you got to go with that first phase with the November, December um, enrollment notices and the January enrollment. But March, April, you guys haven't started yet. If you have a true up in March or April, you just got your first notice, time to start looking at things, seeing what you want to do, how you want to approach this. Um, we offer to solar customers who are unsure about what they'd like to do a solar analysis at this point in time with Pioneer's rates the way they are structured. Many solar customers save money with Pioneer. Where it gets a little tricky is if you are a net surplus generator or you walk that line of being net zero, which means you don't end up getting anything back for your solar, but you don't end up paying for your solar at the same, your electricity at the end of the year because of the true up, 
that net zero component, it can go either way. The big difference is that, um, and the reason of this is because Pioneer bills monthly and reconciles its bill on a monthly basis. And that monthly reconciliation means that if you have credits, they roll forward, use on the next bill or keep rolling until you need them. Or if you've not generated enough and don't have credits on the books to cover the electricity you used, then you pay. And so that's that feature, that structure compared to PG&E's complete let everything roll until the end of the year and get your true up. Um, that makes a little difference. Sometimes the analysis is necessary. Those of you who are net consumers, meaning every year you pay pg e for your electricity because you've used more than you generated, a lot of you say great savings with Pioneer. If you have questions about that, just give us a call and say, hey, can you take a look at it? What am I looking at? How will that work? We're happy to, to help you with that one. Now, a lot of folks have heard rumors about, oh my gosh, I didn't opt out by December 31st. I'm stuck with Pioneer. Now you can leave at any time. And then I've heard folks go, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to have to pay to leave Pioneer. No, you don't. You can leave Pioneer anytime. There are no charges, no fees. One caveat, let you know, see this, the uh, November to March line up there that gives you those months, that's called the enrollment window. And the enrollment windows for all of the solar customers are down below, you know, July, August, you have May to July. That enrollment window is when you can come and go back and forth with no issues for the first phase, which is the January folks who've rolled in, you do need to have your decision in kind of before like mid to late March. And the reason why is after that point, you can still leave Pioneer. It's totally fine. The thing there is that pg e at that point says, okay, you've had the enrollment window. Now we wanna hold you for a year. So if you go back to pg e after March, um, for those of you who've, who had the January enrollment, first phase, pg e will want you to stay with them for a year. Not a problem for us. That's your choice. We, we totally honor it. We just want you to know that you'll have that. One of the other things that pg e will ask is they say, do you want to come back in six months or immediately? And that gets a little confusing. And the reason pg e does that is that they stopped buying power on your behalf. So when you leave Pioneer and you go back to them, they and you do it immediately, they want you in on what they call a transition rate, which means that they have to go to the market and buy power at the rate it's out there that you know, you're helping cover their costs. And then six months later, they transition you onto whatever rate you had before. If you wait six months, you sit with Pioneer for six months. Um, and I'll just say, you'll enjoy our savings, but then in those six months, you'll join pg e at the rate you're already on, no problem, and you'll move forward. Solar customers, anybody who has questions about grand grandfathering, your NEM rate, are you NEM1, NEM2, are you E6 and E1, none of that changes when you enroll with Pioneer. None of that changes. The only folks who can really change that is the CPUC, which they'll be doing something with that in March, maybe. So we'll see what happens there. So hopefully that's given you a lot for solar folks and for some others. So a lot of folks have come up to us and said, hey, why is this auto enrollment? I don't like this. You're not, you're not really giving me a choice. You're making a choice for me and then telling me I have to tell you if I don't wanna play. I don't wanna participate. I, I wanna leave. We understand. We totally understand that. There are two reasons that this was created this way by the California legislature. And they set it up, number one, for equality and fairness. They did not want any community creating a community choice aggregation program, which is what Pioneer is. They didn't want you creating a, a program, going in, and then choosing which communities got the benefits and which did not. It was an all in, everyone has access and they can choose not to participate, but you couldn't refuse anyone. So that's why they did it. It was an all in for, for fair and equal access. The second one is it's impossible to buy power one house at a time. You need to have the ability to buy power in bulk. So they aggregate all the loads and all the accounts in the service area you're gonna cover. And then you buy, start buying power on it. And those who don't wanna play or don't want to participate can leave. And then you just adjust your power procurement based on who's staying with you. And that's why they set it up that way. Um, not the favorite of a lot of folks understand, we hear you, uh, you know, none of us likes being told uh, what to do and to be given an opt out process. 
not the best, but for functionality and fairness, it's the way the system was set up. You can choose to stay with Pioneer or return to PG&E, like we said, at any time. Totally up to you. You can, I have several people who have come and said, I don't know, I want to I want to watch. Can I watch and then come back later? Absolutely. We've had enough people choose to do that. We've had other people who've said, well, let me test you. And you can do this. Let me test you for my January and February bills, and then I'll make a decision. Perfectly fine. You can choose at any time. This is the power of choice. We are breaking the monopoly, and you now have the opportunity for at least where your power is coming from and who your power provider is. You have a choice. As we said, solar customers, you're going to enroll. Same kind of feature uh, around the date of your true up. Um, there's no PPs. You can opt out. Um, solar customers, we have, we have some folks who call up and go, hey, my true up's in June. I want to opt out now. Your account isn't activated with us until 60 days before your enrollment. And there's a reason we do that and a reason why PG&E does that. While we can ask to have you activated if you want to enroll early, you're not actually activated for the purposes of enrollment to protect your true up. We don't want any accidental enrollments. If someone's got a June true up and we accidentally enroll them in January, that's a mess for them and loss of credits. And so by not having that account activated, it's a fail safe to make sure that someone's not enrolled outside of what they should have been. But that also means that if you want to not participate with Pioneer, you do need to wait to that 60 days before your uh, true update. So that schedule we had where you had the Marches and Aprils and the May, June, July, August. Um, as we said, there's a transitional uh, rate or a six month waiting period with pg e outside of the enrollment window. We're still in the enrollment window. You can leave now and come back at any time. You can come back now. You can make your choice. You can do all of that. Just at the end of March, you're going to want to watch it so that you know that pg e if, if it's, it's not a problem, you can still leave. It's just pg e will want to hold you for a year or they will um, ask you to wait six months and then they'll hold you from a year from that. So just kind of uh, keep that in mind. Okay, solar. We've got 30,000 people who've got Pioneer for solar at this point in time. Um, we've done some individual bill analyses showing a lot of different things. A medical baseline plays well into this one for those of you who have it with solar. For those, like we said, who are uh, net surplus generators, just so you know, uh, we pay a half cent more than pg e What we do is index to whatever their rate is and then uh, increase it by half cent. So if you normally would get $86 from uh, pg e for your kilowatt, uh, extra kilowatt generation, you'd be looking at something a little more than $90, maybe 94. So um, PG, uh, Pioneer, like we said, bills uh, monthly. So it's not necessarily a true up. It is a reconciliation each month and it just rolls forward um, with a net surplus cash out in the March, April time period. And what that means is that we've looked at all of the different periods when folks can cash out their extra kilowatt hours and we found March, April to be one of the best, not for everybody, we admit this, you know, but it seemed to be the best for the majority of people. Most people start generating electricity uh, much better in the March, April time period. So we look back over the past 12 months, see if you generated more than you used. And if you did, if it's less than $25, it goes on the bill as a cash credit. If it's more than $25, we actually send you a check. Uh, we paid out $175,000 in 2020, $185,000 in 2021 to customers. Um, the other thing we offer you is we are happy to, to help you decipher the bills. Uh, a lot of folks who've got an M plus uh, battery, you're now getting a, what's called a detail of bill. It's a very tricky thing to read. We're happy to go over that. We're happy to look at current bills, if you want to know where your savings is, if you don't have savings, if you have, how is your billing billed, you know, what's your usage, how is your consumption, all of those kinds of things. There's a lot of things that we can show you on the bills and we're happy to go over it. So anyone who's got a bill or if you're new to solar and it doesn't make any sense, let us know. We are happy to walk you through it. We'll take the time to make sure you're comfortable with your bill and how it works and understanding it. So Folks have been asking us, oh, okay, Pioneer, you've, 
you know, outside of rates, what else can you do for me? Well, this is kind of one of the areas where Pioneer has been an advocate, and we've been a very strong advocate for the Sierra Nevada and the people who live in hot climates. Hot climates are defined as those climates that have really, you know, extreme temperatures in the summer. Wow, over 100 degrees is that on us? And um, other things that, about the hot climates is they usually are polar, where they have, you know, 20 degree winters and 115 degree summers. And so that kind of climate zone has a lot of unique electricity needs, very different from the Bay Area. I don't think any of us would argue that, but that means that a lot of the decisions being made are being influenced by the heavily uh, populated areas in the Bay Area and, and some of the urban areas in the big cities. Those policies don't necessarily work for El Dorado County, Placer County, or the Sierra Nevada. So those are some of the things that we, we look at. We watch at the legislature and we watch at the Public Utilities Commission. One of the first places we took up advocacy was with the public safety power shutoffs. Um, the first ones we started going after was, was in June of 2019 when that program first started up. And we started pushing for criteria and reporting and um, you know notifications, information, uh, wanting local authorities to know when's the power going off, how long is it going to be off, who's going to have resource centers for folks who are hot or who have no power and need to charge cell phones and stuff like that. All of those services came through advocacy at the Public Utilities Commission. Another thing that came through the Public Utilities Commission was the battle over the 2019 public safety power shutoffs. If everyone remembers, hundreds of thousands of us had no power in 2019 for days and in some cases weeks not good so documentation push um advocacy ex partes with commissioners briefs you name it testimony we put it all together and we pushed and joined in with others to advocate and put state that this was not done right. This was not done well. And the result was the Public Utilities Commission looked at it and said, you know what, the documentation shows that this wasn't done right. And so penalties were assigned. And in the PG&E territory, those penalties for um, not complying with the terms and conditions of how a public safety power shutoff should have been done will result in some refunds from penalties on our bills in April. So we're looking forward to that. The latest one, public safety power shutoffs, um, have moved into a enhanced power line safety shutoffs were called fast trips. pg e started in July of 2021, implementing some equipment that instead of having to turn off all the lines, this equipment would turn itself off automatically if it's recognized a problem on the line, which is okay. It's a nice safety trip, you know, not, you know, not turning off all the transmission lines and putting thousands of people in an area out. Maybe it's only, you know, a couple hundred, but that couple hundred has become a couple thousand because all of these new pieces of equipment aren't calibrated properly. Extremely sensitive, too sensitive, so sensitive that the folks in Georgetown and Pollock Pines and parts of Placerville and Colfax and Forest Hill and, and parts of Auburn, everybody's experienced public safety, the experience these shutoffs because this equipment has not been uh, put in the way it needed to be or being operated appropriately. So we've been working on this one. Um, the latest pushes that we're having is making sure that everyone is advised when this program is activated because they have to go through and calibrate everything and turn it all on so power will go off and that they're supposed to provide us information about uh, something being tripped and how long it's going to happen and having more staff available so people aren't waiting for the power to come up on for days. We want it to be down to hours. So we're working on that. Some other things we've done is there's uh, biomass. A lot of us have talked about um, wanting to see something done with the forest fuel and uh, wood waste that's in our forests, and it can be turned into a power source. It's called biomass. And with that, um, there is a program at the state that allows for kind of a subsidization, but basically what it does is it helps uh, reduce the overall cost of biomass. And it's a program that already exists. It's there. It's just not being taken advantage of. So Pioneer, uh, along with one other CCA, co-authored a bill. We sponsored it. Our own Sam Kine was a expert witness at the legislature to push for opening that up so that community choice aggregators like Pioneer could uh, meet up and partner with pro project proponents, 
local governments and agencies and the communities to put biomass in where it makes sense close to the source of uh, fuels so we can reduce the fire risk and we can uh, improve our watersheds, but also provide power and possibly mitigate those public safety sh power shutoffs. So that's some of the things that we've been working there. Local spending, we are completely dedicated to and actually have a policy for local vendor preference. Uh, in 2020, Pioneer completed its report for the Public Utilities Commission and found that about 40 plus percent of our spending, this is not power, is uh, non-power procurement. So janitorial services, printings, um, uh, stock items like pens, paper, those kinds of things, office supplies, that we put about 40 plus percent of our, our non-power budget went into the local economy. We went, then went from there to about 65 percent was regional, meaning the Sacramento region. And from there, 77 to 82 percent was California. Um, where we can, we do buy local. We've got local power pro procurement that we've done. We've bought from El Dorado Irrigation District, and we've bought from uh, Rio Bravo and Sierra Pacific Industries, both which are located in Lincoln. We've bought from Placer County Water Agency. So we do prioritize spending local first as much as we possibly can, because local first means that we're stimulating the economy and we're taking energy dollars that people are paying for their electricity and putting them back into the community and keeping that money here rather than sending it someplace else like uh, San Francisco. So um, one of the other things we did, um, we, we were very sad to see the Calder fire and how it affected the folks of El Dorado County in Placer County at the same time we had the river fire come up and um, it, it did a lot of damage, a lot of homes lost. The Pioneer Board had the discretion and made the choice to uh, waive bills for the customers who lost their homes in those fires. They felt that any family that had been devastated by such a loss shouldn't be looking at a bill for July or August for their electricity. And so um, waived up to $50,000 in bills. Those are the kinds of things that you can do as a local agency and um, uh, locally controlled. One of the other things we can do is we can create programs that customers want. These are things that you ask for, we can provide. So Pioneer had done a survey asking folks, you know, hey, what do you like? What do you want? What do, you, what, what do we have? What do we not have? What would you like to see? And one of the things that came up was a lot of folks, and we were quite surprised by this, said, we want a 100% renewable option. We want to be able to know that the power that I pay for is 100% renewable. So we came up with Pioneer Green 100. Um, it is 100% renewable resources. Right now, it's mostly hydro, it's hydro, mostly hydroelectric. It can be others, biomass, uh, geothermal, wind, solar, depends on uh, what's out there and, and you know good costs. It's completely voluntary. I mean, we had that rate for you to see what the adder is, but it's there only if you ask for it. If you don't ask for it, you, you it's not something you have to worry about. It's completely voluntary. It's a customer choice. Like we said, it's about one, 1.1 1 .1 cent more per kilowatt hour. Um, so basically about $7 a month on an average bill if you wanted to do that, if it was important to you. So we've talked about advocacy, we've talked about local programs, we've talked about rates, and this all comes from local control. And that's probably the key reason that, that a community looks for community choice aggregation to create something like Pioneer. It's so we as a community can make our choice about how our electricity functions and where it comes from. The board members for Pioneer are elected officials from the local cities and counties. Being that they are there, they are not compensated. So let me reiterate this. This is a board upon which these members from Placerville, Auburn, Colfax, Lincoln, Loomis, uh, Placer County Board of Supervisors or the El Dorado County Board of Supervisors serve. They are appointed by their board to this board for Pioneer uncompensated. It's part of their standard duties. So there's no kickbacks. There's none of those things. I've seen a lot of social media stuff talking about that. There is there is nothing. They don't get any compensation. They serve as part of their duties as an elected official for the community they, they represent. Um, we are a community owned means you as the right pair own it. We have all of our board meetings are subject to the public uh, record, the Brown Act and are open to the public. You can comment, you can write letters, you can attend, you can talk to the board members directly. Um, 
we look about having competitive rates and energy options. Our employees, we're local. We, most of us live in either El Dorado or Placer County. Um, and we are, a lot of us are, you know, we are Pioneer Community Energy customers as well. And so uh, everyone has, you know, options and choices in this. And this is uh, part of what makes us local is we are, when we talk about people being customers, being our friends and neighbors, we mean it. You know, a, lot of, a lot of you are our friends and neighbors. We have a community programs advisory committee. This is a group of five folks from uh, El Dorado County and six people from Placer County, and they are coming to meet with Pioneer as a committee to guide programs to help give the Pioneer Board insight into programs folks might want. So is it, do people want rebates? Do they want um, a rebate for buying a used electric vehicle? Do they want electric vehicle charging stations? Do they want rebates for buying, uh, replacing refrigerators? Uh, do people want special discount programs for seniors? Do we want energy efficiency programs? We have the power of over our programs and so the community can decide what it wants. Now, we also, you know, when we talked about local control, um, when we were looking at the rate savings, Placer County enjoyed from 2018 to 2020 savings that resulted in more than $32 million saved. And that's everybody, $93 average for uh, residential customers, um, you know, thousands of dollars for commercial customers. Uh, we are looking at returning to that in 2022 uh, with the adjustments that PG&E is making to everything. So the final question we come down to is, so why would you choose Pioneer? Well, it's your choice. We can put out some of the ideas. One, Pioneer is about local control. We're not for profit. We answer to rate payers. We answer to you, your issues, your concerns. Our staff is local, our, pub, our meetings are public and open. We provide stable competitive rates. Now, when we say stable rates, that doesn't make much sense until we say that, you know, Pioneer's last rate adjustment before the decision the board made in December of 2021, the last time they looked at rates and made any adjustments was October of 2019. So more than two years at the same rate, that's pretty stable and that's pretty competitive. So that's what you know, Pioneer tries to do. Um, we know that businesses and homeowners and residents, it's really hard to plan a budget around electricity rates when they're constantly going up. So stable means we don't change them all the time. We set them and hold, and that's what they've done. So contrast to PG&E, well, they've got you know, PG is a very large company. It's one of the largest utilities in the states. It's got nine over 940 million shares. So that's folks who are investors. Um, the income there is noted from, uh, you know, we said we're not for profit. They do need to make an income. They do need to pay a dividends to their shareholders. They answer to Wall Street. You know, stock is very important and a very, um, you know, how the stock plays out is important to their bottom line and their ability to do business. So they have to watch that. They are based out of San Francisco. The board meetings are private. You cannot attend them. Um, we've actually tried to find out when and where they're held and haven't been able to do that just for kicks and giggles to see if we could. Um, they have multiple annual rate increases. So anytime you look on your bill and you see a date that may say, oh, from uh, December 15th, 2020 to January 1, 2021, and that's your, your billing time, but you see there's from 12, one to, to, or from 12.15 to 12.30, and from one, uh, 1 to 1.15, you see two different sets. That usually means there was a rate change. Something in the rates changed at that time, and you can see it, and they're, they usually happen four times a year. Uh, like I said, Pioneer, last time we changed anything was uh, August or October of 2019, and then most recently, December of 2021, and that takes effect in March. So um, outside of that, the last thing we have, and we're going to open up to questions at this point, and good, we're going up for three. This is our contact information. We are local. We are ro located in Rockland. That's where our office is. We do spend a lot of time in the El Dorado County area. Um, we'll actually be in person this Thursday at the Community Services District in Cameron Park. And this is our customer service email. That is our website, 
tons of information on the website. Um, most everything for solar customers and those of you who are dealing with time of use, we got lots of good resources there. Um, we also located on Facebook. You can reach out to us there. Um, with that, uh, Steve, let's open it up to questions and see what you've got. All right, thank you, Alexia. We do have uh, two questions here. Um, I think they were answered in the uh, presentation, but that some people joined late, so we can go over them again. We, the first question is, will the customers of Pioneer Energy experience less or no public safety shutoffs or experience less weather-related outages like we do now with pg &E? Okay, so we talked about the lines and poles being the property of pg &E. And because of that, because that infrastructure is um, their bread and butter and their property, we don't have control over it. We did experience fewer public safety power shutoffs in 2021. Um, it went down from 2019 to 2020 and from 2020 to 2021, we saw fewer and fewer public safety power shutoffs. That was because of the improved criteria and the uh, clarification of when and how to turn them off and exactly what lines should be turned off. So that has improved, but we can't stop it 100%. And um, in all honesty, I, I know a lot of us remember Paradise, uh, some of us have lost uh, friends or families or uh, families that lost homes up there. Um, you know, I don't think any one of us would disagree that if you turned the power off for 24 hours and we would have saved paradise, I think we all would have agreed to that. But there is a limit and there should be good constructs. It should be an item of last resort. So no, we, we cannot stop the, the storm damages and things. We can push for improvements. We can advocate that lines that are continually turned off under public safety power shutoffs or storm damage be improved with the latest and greatest uh, infrastructure to keep it from happening. We can advocate for undergrounding where it makes a lot of sense because those types of things can reduce public safety power shutoffs and storm damage. So we do advocate we don't control, but we can put pressure where we think it can help and serve our communities. So uh, next question. All right, the next question is, how long will pg e charge the PCIA for those that leave? <laughs> oh, that is, you know, that's a crystal ball. That's been something we've been looking at. Um, it depends on the contracts. Now, Logic dictates, and I think all of us agree that if there are contracts that are put in place and they've got a time at 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, they end, right? And they should come off the PCIA. Well, that does happen, but then there are other things that get put into there that we've been struggling with, with the Public Utilities Commission and the legislature and, and the utilities, to be honest, um, pushing for rational approaches to the PCIA and what should be in there. Um, some of those contracts that we're aware of uh, go out to 2035, and there may be a couple that are longer than that. Um, one of the other things that makes Pioneer com very competitive is Pioneer is constantly hunting the deal, looking for the best prices, best mix of power, making sure we meet all our regulatory requirements, but also making sure that we're getting power for the best prices. Um, if we have a contract that is out of market, meaning it's above what should be paid because things have changed, well, we'll see if there's you know, a way to go use an off-ramp or renegotiate and drop those costs. That's called optimizing your portfolio. Well, that's one of the things we've been trying to get the investor-owned utilities to do all of them in the state. Well, optimize your portfolio. If you've got a 20 year old contract, that has got five more years left on it. It's out of market, renegotiate it, cancel it, replace it. There's gotta be some kind of option. Um, so we've been trying to do those kinds of things to push for um, that. Those are some of the things that we advocate for and we look for and uh, you know, try and get out of the PCIA as much as possible um, every year. We have amazing technical experts. We collaborate with the 24 CCAs around the state and they, they get in there and they collaborate and they look at uh, all of the information that goes into that PCIA, making sure that 
you know, uh, if you write down 220,000, you, you know, that wasn't an oopsie, you left off, you know, a couple of zeros, and it was 220 million. We've seen that happen, little things like that to make sure that, that things that are charged are as accurate and fair as possible, which is why the PCIA is changing back down this coming March, because there were a lot of things that happened in the PCIA last year that shouldn't have. And so um, we're bringing it back, you know, getting it back under control and bringing it back down is, is part of what's happening through the Public Utilities Commission. So long story, it's gonna be here for a while. How soon would we like it to go? As soon as possible. So next question. All right, Alexi, there are no more uh, written questions at this time. I, okay, so you got the other one. Are there any, are there anything in the chat? There is nothing in the chat and no hands raised. Okay, so folks, if you are finished and you, you know, you're, we're, we will keep this open for a while longer. So if you've thought about anything or you have another question, ooh, I, I just saw some hands go up, Steve. Did I see hands go yeah, up? I think that's more questions. Just, uh, <laughs> Just one we're, more we're, question just popped up here. Okay. It is how can Green 100 customers know that 100% of their energy is coming from renewable sources? Okay, so what happens with 100% um, renewable products? So folks understand, because it gets a little confusing. How can we track your electrons and make sure that your electrons are the clean ones that go in there? What Green 100 customers are actually doing is by demanding that they have access to 100% renewable power. They are making sure that that much more power on the entire grid, the entire state of California's grid is that much cleaner. So the resources that we go for, like right, right now it's coming from hydroelectric. Well, that energy is mixed in with the rest of the power itself and it's raising the amount of green that is actually in the uh, the mixture. So for Pioneer, the more people who request Green 100, the more renewable energy we buy, the less fossil fuel or other type of non-renewable uh, energy is in our portfolio. And so that is a that's the dynamic and how it works. We can't literally track electrons from from the source to the to the actual person, but you are creating a cleaner electricity. Uh, in the grid overall. So I hope that explains how that works. All right, we have uh, another question here. It is, mm -hmm. will, we, will we be billed by pg e or Pioneer? So the way billing works is that under the law, pg e is our billing agent. So for those customers who have, uh, who are non-solar, so you're just a standard customer, you don't have any solar panels. You will see PG&E's electric delivery charges on page three, and you'll see Pioneer's uh, uh, generation charges on page four. And so what ends up happening is for everyone, and for solar customers, you're usually page six or seven for your uh, electric delivery charges and then breakout, and then page eight for Pioneer's generation charges. When you look at your bill, it comes from pg &E. It says Pioneers on there. You can see the charges. One of the big things to look at is on the page that has your electric delivery charges. When you see that, there's something called a generation credit. It's a little line. It's right under, you know, buried under a couple of things, your base uh, charges and then a couple of other things. And then it says generation credit. The generation credit is what you would have paid PG&E for electricity. We've frequently called customers bundled. When you're with PG&E, you're bundled. It means that PG&E takes both sides of the business, transmission and distribution, and electric purchase, electric power purchasing, and they bundle it as one rate. But when you go with Pioneer or another community uh, choice aggregator or direct access, you are now unbundled because you don't get everything from one source. As an unbundled customer, pg &E does not have the ability to line item their bill. So instead of trying to you know, factor it all out, they just go through and do a generation credit 
on the bill. And that generation credit is what you would have paid them. And you can compare that to what you pay Pioneer. That's just the electricity. Of course, so I have to factor in the PCIA, but that's how that works. You get one bill, you make one payment, whether it's you know e-bill and auto pay or you write a check, either way, you pay one bill. pg e and Pioneer work out the distribution of an allocation of the payment. You don't have to worry about anything. There's no additional bills to track. There's no additional things to look for, no additional deadlines, no additional checks, nothing. It's all handled uh, through pg e and the, on the backside, it's pg and Pioneer work that out. So hopefully that answers that question. Okay. Two more questions. Um, sure. Looks like we have a hand raised that was raised earlier, but it went down. So I'm going to uh, go to the person that's raised their hand. If I think they're going to wait until a little bit here. Nice. And last name, Loomis. I'm going to allow you to talk. And just unmute yourself. I'm on the, hi, hey. I'm, on the, I'm on the CARES plan. Will, yeah. that stay in, will that stay in place? Yes, all programs stay in place. So medical baseline, CARE, FARA, all of those programs are actually state programs. They are programs the Public Utilities Commission put in place and PG&E administers them on behalf of the Public Utilities Commission. So they're available for everyone. No problem. It just slips right on through. There's no disruption. If you are looking at your medical baseline or care fara and you need to reapply for it, all done with PGE, their administrator, no interference whatsoever. For those who are not aware of what those programs are, care fara, um, California Alternative Rates for Energy, and um, uh, FARA is the Family Electric Rate Assistance Programs. Both of those offer folks based on income discounts on their utilities, which are fabulous. Medical Baseline is a program for those who have medical conditions and have uh, equipment like wheelchairs that need charging or CPAP machines or oxygen machines that they need to use, or they have to maintain their home at a certain temperature due to a medical condition um, and can't have high fluctuations in temperature. Those medical conditions require more use of electricity. So medical baseline, literally, if everyone's allowed to have 500 kilowatt hours at one rate and you have medical baseline, you get double the amount. So instead of 500, kilowatt hours at 25 cents a kilowatt hour, you get a thousand hours at 25 cents. And so it kind of allows more usage at the lowest rate possible. Um, they're great programs, but yes, those programs work with Pioneer very well, not a problem at all. And the, you know, um, there's no hiccups, no uh, redirections or, or any reapplications you need to do. And for those who have medical baseline, the PCIA um, this year will only be one quarter of what it is for everyone else. Um, it'll go up by one quarter a year until it stabilizes. Uh, pg e just initiated that process, but for right now, um, if the uh, PCIA is two cents, you and you're only paying a quarter of that, you're going to pay about half uh, about a half cent. So that's how that works. Other questions? Oh, and did that help? Did that answer your question? Do you have more? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and next we have, is nuclear considered renewable by Pioneer? Nuclear is, dis, um, is considered a renewable energy, um, not just by Pioneer, but uh, it is in the uh, Public Utilities Commission that way. Um, with the way resource adequacy and some of the renewal portfolio standard stuff work, which a lot of gobbledygook I just said there, basically the way electric um, electricity portfolios in the state of California work, Pioneer had an allocation of nuclear that we accepted from PG&E. And um, we do have a little bit in there. Um, we've got most of our power procured and we're looking at what we can do to um, sell off that energy and things. But yeah, nuclear is considered now, for that said, those who are not fond of nuclear uh, know that Mount uh, that uh, Diablo Canyon is slated for decommissioning in the next couple of years. So the amount of nuclear available in California's portfolio overall 
in the electric grid is going to drop because Diablo is coming offline. So next question. Okay, um, what is Pioneer's retention rate for customers in El Dorado County? Currently, Pioneer's uh, participation rate is over 91, 92%. Um, it's been running 89% in Placer County, and it's running about 92% right now in El Dorado County. Um, it changes if you break out classes. So um, with businesses, we see a higher retention rate than we do with residential. Um, businesses make decisions based on money. Um, a lot of residents make decisions based on um, their, their personal beliefs, um, their opinions, what they feel is important to them, and they, they vote that way. And so uh, that changes our rate down a little bit in some cases. All right. Other questions? Mm -hmm. We have my current PG&E bill shows tier charges. Does Pioneer have tiers? If so, what are the charges? Okay, so tiers are a function of like an E1 rate. Um, basically, you have, it's called a flat rate and Pioneer is a flat rate. We don't have tiers. Tiers are a, an artifact of transmission distribution. And what it is, is you pay the base rate for your electricity all day, every day, same amount. But if you use more than the baseline allowance, so let's say the baseline allowance is 450 kilowatt hours and you use 500, well, you've used 50 kilowatt hours over the baseline. Because you've used 50 hours over that, that baseline, PG&E adds a tier, an increase on the transmission distribution side for the capacity, it's not about the electricity used, it's about the capacity on the lines. And so that's where the tiers come in. Pioneer, 450, 500, 600, 1,000, it's a flat rate, it's the same. There are no tiers for us because we're just generation. Those other constructs of the tiers are specific um, incentives on the transmission distribution side to try to push people through cost incentives to not use a lot of power. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, but no, we do not have tears. All right. There are no more uh, questions in the Q&A, no chat questions and no hands raised. OK, so I'll tell you what we're going to do just in case. So if folks are um, chewing on things or thinking about things, we're going to hang for another 10 minutes um, just so you have uh, an, uh, you know, something you know, sparks your thoughts and you want to ask it. In the meantime, like I said, here's our phone number. Um, we actually answer those calls and call you back. That is our customer service uh, email address. So please feel free to use that. You also have, uh, you can access us through the Pioneer Community Energy website. Steve's done an awesome job setting that up. There's a subscription form there. There's a customer contact link. Um, as, as we said, you can find us on Facebook. You can, um, if you follow us on Facebook, we publicize a lot of our events there and where we're going to be. We also on our website have a an events page. And when you click on that, it tells you uh, where we're going to be participating with presenting a a public meeting or if we're going to be um, at a, an event um, like the, uh, the fair or something along those lines. So you can always catch us there. And like we said, we're going to be in person, as far as we know, it's still on um, at Cameron Park Community Services District on Thursday. So, um, and we'll also be seeing the Rotaries this week and the Chamber of Commerce next week. So. So Steve, how many folks do we still have hanging with us? There are still 16 online, but still no questions at this time. If you're not comfortable using the Q&A or the, the chat feature, you can raise your hand and Steve can um, let you ask your question verbally if it's easier for you. Um, and for the folks who are left, um, we talked about doing analyses. We have done 
a lot of solar analysis for folks who are looking at it and unsure how Pioneer might work with their, their solar system and the way um, their usage is. It's a very unique and individual type of experience when you have solar. It's size of your system, how much electricity you use, um, whether you have electric vehicles, all of those kinds of things. And so um, we do custom analysis to help folks make good choices if they'd like. We also found, this was interesting, um, we did not slate people who are on smart rate or solar choice for enrollment because uh, solar choice had a waiting list. And if we pulled you off of it, you couldn't get back on. And we didn't think that was fair. And then uh, smart rate is a program that can only be done with pg &E, So we um, didn't enroll that because folks use it to um, you know, shed load, which basically means in the summertime, they agree to um, have their system shut down their air conditioning and stuff from the hours of two to seven when there's a peak day called. Um, we didn't move those folks over, but I just recently completed an analysis and it looks like with the savings that they get throughout the year with Pioneer, you actually can save more than you would on the, the smart rate. Not always. It depends on how much you use and, and if you're really, really effective with doing the, um, the smart rate. But if you're interested in seeing, you know, you're on a smart rate, you'd like to know if I'm on a smart rate, how would it look with my bill? Because, you know, you want to see if you save more money with Pioneer or save money by staying on smart rate. Just give us a call. We're happy to do that analysis. It was um, very interesting to see how that worked out. So we can do that as well. <clears throat> All right, we still have 12 attendees, but no questions. Oh. Well, unfortunately, we, we are not like the Marvel movies where there's one of those Easter eggs at the end where something fun and interesting happens. Um, we just kind of usually hang out here and, and chat with you and, and see what if anybody has additional questions. Okay, we did just have one more question come through. Sure. It says, what safeguards are in place to ensure Placer and El Dorado counties are of similar priority to full pg e counties in the event of a large scale storm event that takes out lines throughout Northern California? Okay, so there is a protocol that pg e has for responding in storm emergencies. When they have warning of a, like um, a winter storm warning, pg e pre-stages crews. They're extremely um, effective and attentive to that. And so they put folks into different areas. Um, one of the things they do is that they focus their entire response in terms of restoring power based on the number of people served by a line. So if you have two transmission lines that are down and one serves 100,000 people and one, the other one serves 50,000 people, they'll take care of the 100,000 line first because they, that way they get 100,000 people back on and then they'll move to the 50,000. If you're in an area where there are distribution lines, like the lines that come from the substations and go to the wooden poles and go around. They will target the lines where they can get the most people up as quickly as possible. And that, that way they can focus on the other damage. Now, for those of us in the rural communities, um, I happen to be in the middle of a town, but I'm on one of the oldest lines and there are only 12 of us, maybe 10 of us on that line. They'll, they'll fix all the lines around me and then they'll get to that one. And it's the same, it's the same priority. Um, it's based on the number of customers there. One of the things that happens is whether you're Pioneer or pg e or direct access, it doesn't matter. We share the same infrastructure. It's all pg es infrastructure. By law and by actual operation, it's impossible for them to go through and say, well, I'm going to fix the line for this customer, but you're with Pioneer, so I'm not going to fix it for you. They can't do that. Um, they can't do that because Pioneer and pg e customers are all mixed together. And so they have other protocols they have to follow and they're not allowed by law to discriminate that way. Um, lines and poles are lines and poles and you fix them for everybody. So um, 
that's how that that kind of works. Now, does that mean that things are restored as quickly as we'd like them? No, I mean, we saw this last storm because of the extensive damage that this storm caused. Um, we had a lot more lines out throughout the state and pg e was really stretched thin and was pulling in crews from other states and other service areas to help them get everything back online. So is there another question? Uh, no more questions at this time. We still have eight. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna wait about two, three more minutes. If you have any other questions, you can let us know. Steve, are we down to what, 12, 10, nine people? Uh, eight people left. Ooh, eight people. You guys are doing really good hanging in there. Awesome. So we'll just kind of count it down in case there's just in case there's one more question that pops into someone's head. And like we said, you can always go to the uh, community service, our customer service number or uh, our office number. Give us a call. You think about them later. I'm always one of those folks who goes to a meeting, thinks about things and on the drive home goes, oh, I should have asked. Well, here you can ask again. You can just give us a call or you can send in an email and we're happy to answer your question. So, um, and you can also find a lot of things on that website. Lots of good frequently asked questions and resources uh, and other materials. So, okay. So we're counting down two minutes, folks. Steve, I didn't open this up to you. Is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I think you've covered it very well, thank you. <laughs> Steve is um, one of our, our really good solar guys. He's uh, one of the people I go to when I'm talking about solar. And if there's something that just doesn't make sense to me, I go ask Steve for more information. He's been extremely helpful with that. So thanks, Steve, for all your solar insight. No problem. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> <laughs> we're down to five attendees. Ooh, so now we're at the point where we, we look and see who's going to hang on the longest. Who's got the best tenacity? <laughs> we got one more minute, folks. Oh, Steve, did I just see a number? Another one pop up? Uh, no, it's just thank you uh, from one of the oh, attendees. So, thank yeah, you for welcome. attending. We really appreciate it. It's, it's great to have folks here, and I hope we answered all your questions. It's long-winded, but we appreciate you hanging in with us. Ah, and we're I can down see. to the final two. Oh, because two of them are us. Ah, I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, folks, for hanging in. We really appreciate it. We hope you found this useful and that it it um, kind of gave you some some insight. Catherine and Lori, thank you so much. Okay, we've hit 712. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shut her down. Thanks again for attending. We really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with us on this wonderful Tuesday evening. And again, if you have any other questions in the future, just give us a holler at those two locations, uh, either email or phone call. And thank you so much for attending. And Steve, I think we can let her rip.